infrastructure replacement is very much in the news these days, and Ottawa made the headlines in the summer of 2007. The rapid lift replacement of the Island Park Drive Bridge on Highway 417 was a highlight. It was the first time that this technique, pioneered in Europe, was used on a highway in Canada. Highway 417 is the east-west lifeline of the city of Ottawa. With 150,000 vehicles per day, traffic is at capacity during the peak morning and afternoon rush hours. Of course, infrastructure renewal has always caused increased congestion and delay due to detours, narrowed lanes and construction activity. The Ministry of Transportation of Ontario has been proactive and identified several structures to have the superstructure replacement completed using rapid lift technology. The Island Park Bridge on Highway 417 was the first. At 8 p.m. on Saturday, August 11th, the highway was closed. The existing eastbound and westbound superstructures were then removed and new superstructures installed in their place. It reopened on Sunday, just before noon, less than 16 hours later. In comparison, conventional bridge repair was estimated to require about two years of work with the usual lane closures, delays and inconvenience. But while the road was closed for only a few hours, preparation work for the lift began many months before. The bridges, originally built 48 years ago, were in bad shape and the girders and decks would have to be removed. But the existing abutments would be used again to support the new superstructures. They had to be repaired and refaced. In this case, the refacing included the addition of new reinforcing steel, as well as the use of sacrificial anode technology to protect the steel from further corrosion. The wing walls were demolished locally at each of the four quadrants in order to allow the passage of each new bridge constructed with diaphragms to allow the semi-integral abutment conversion. Brackets were used to attach the ballast walls to the existing steel girders in order to allow the removal of the ballast wall together with the bridges during the rapid lift. At the same time, work began on the construction area. In this case, Hampton Park, which fulfilled the key conditions necessary for rapid lift operations. It was adjacent to the bridges to be lifted, and it was large enough to allow the new superstructures to be prefabricated on temporary supports at the same relative elevations and clearances planned for the permanent bridges. The general contractor, Dufferin Construction, used the high load system to build the temporary support structures. Fabrication of the new decks began on the site in early summer. Girders and formwork were erected during the next few months to be ready for the key concrete deck placement operation in July. On each new structure, concrete was pumped up to the elevated superstructure and a screed machine was used for smoothing and finishing. When the concrete was cured, the contractor removed the central portion of the high load support system to allow the lifting devices to be positioned under each new superstructure. A third temporary support was built to accommodate the transport sequence during the lift operation. Another phase of the lift preparations was also proceeding, this one on the expressway itself. And it was one of the few parts of the projects that actually caused lane closures. The work was done day and night over three weekends just prior to the rapid lift. That part of the project involved excavation between the existing bridge abutments to remove the approach slabs and cut the ballast walls using a large track-mounted concrete saw. This was done to avoid interference in the placement of the new structures, as well as to allow conversion of the bridges to a semi-integral abutment system. The semi-integral abutment system has key benefits. It eliminates the expansion joints, which cause bumping, and it also eliminates the road salt leaks, which are a key cause of concrete and steel deterioration and subsequent shortened bridge life. 
Finally, the bridges were ready to be lifted away and replaced by the new superstructures. Mamoet, a Dutch heavy engineering company with extensive experience in the technology, would do the work. Because of site constraints, high voltage towers and minimum time allowed for the move, the bridges would be lifted and carried by two self-propelled modular transporters known as SPMTs. SPMTs are made up of highly maneuverable multi-axle self-propelled modules, a number of which can be configured to the load to be carried and driven by one operator using a remote control. Each axle can carry up to 40 metric tons. For the bridge lift, the SPMTs were configured with beams and columns to lift and carry the 650-ton bridge superstructures just 75 centimeters above their permanent elevations, each rolling at 1 km per hour on 216 wheels. Placed the new superstructures perfectly on the abutment and bolts, the SPMTs had to maneuver with intolerances of millimeters. Just prior to the lifting operation, SPMTs were positioned beneath the first superstructure to be moved, the old westbound lanes. The temporary connections between the old bridges and the highway were removed, and at about 9 p.m., the SPMTs lifted the bridge and began to roll towards the staging area to be placed on temporary supports. The eastbound lanes bridge was lifted next, and both bridges were gone just prior to midnight. Back at the staging area, SPMTs lifted the new eastbound bridge and transported it to its permanent place, setting it down on its abutments with pinpoint accuracy. It was 2 a.m. The operation was not without a few problems. As the second SPMT was lifting the new westbound lanes bridge off its temporary supports, a hydraulic hose connector ruptured causing a lengthy delay. By dawn, the operation had resumed. At about 6.30 a.m., both new superstructures were in place and secured. Backfilling was then completed and preparation for paving began. The last operation, paving, proved to be the source of another delay. Early on that August morning, in full sun, the temperature was already very high, and even though water was sprayed on it, the hot asphalt would take a long time to cool sufficiently for traffic to be allowed to roll on it. Finally, at about 11.30 a.m., the eastbound 417 was reopened, followed by the westbound lanes about 20 minutes later. In spite of slightly exceeding the stipulated time for the lift, the operation was unanimously hailed as a brilliant success. Indeed, the Minister of Transport, the Honorable Donna Cansfield, was enthusiastic. And the opinion was shared by the spectators, some of whom had remained to watch throughout the night. It is estimated that the rapid lift saved the ministry about $2.4 million and spared the public untold time and frustration. There is little doubt that this will not be the last rapid lift operation in Ontario's bridge infrastructure renewal program.